My money, yes or no? No. You don't need much more than that eight second clip to understand just about everything that 1999's payback has going on in it. It's about a pissed off cat who'll stop at nothing to get the money that's owed him. Hi, I'm Clint Davis from OverdueReview.com. Mel Gibson stars as Porter, a thief with a heart of gold who's after $70,000 that were stolen from him by his wife and a former partner after a heist. Oh, and he's extra pissed because when they took the cash, they also shot him and left him for dead. That'd be enough to piss anybody off. And yes, you heard me right, he's only after $70,000. That's a point that's made many times during the film. 70? What do you mean it's only 70? Only 70,000? My suits are worth more than that. An interesting thing about when Payback hit theaters is that it came out right during the last stretch of box office domination that Gibson had as a star before his public image went right down the crapper. It came out right between Lethal Weapon 4 and Chicken Run, which were both huge international box office smashes. And it was released about a year before The Patriot, which would go on to perhaps be Gibson's last signature role. Porter, who's never given a first name, is mostly a one-note character, but that's not a bad thing. Payback is a one-note film. It's a revenge shoot 'em up that has a major hard-on for the crime noir genre of a bygone age. Crooked cops. Did they come any other way? I mean, just listen to that voiceover narration. Nobody likes a monkey on their back. I had three. It's straight out of Double Indemnity. I was going to have to lighten the load. Payback was written and directed by Brian Helgeland. Now, he did two of the grittiest screenplays of recent Hollywood memory, in my opinion, 1997's L.A. Confidential and 2003's Mystic River. Both were huge critical successes, and he actually won an Oscar for the L.A. Confidential screenplay, which likely led to him getting the power to be able to direct and write Payback, which was a first for him. But you'll notice that this movie is much more straightforward than either of those two. As I said, it's a one-note film. It's about a hard-ass guy who's relentless in his pursuit of retribution. I mean, he kills people. He assaults people. He steals money from homeless guys. Help, thank, thank you, sir. Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Get the, get the fuck out of oh. Shut up. I cured you. He purposefully knocks his wife out with her own front door. And he's not a fan of facial piercings. So if Porter sounds like an asshole, it's because Helgeland really wants you to think he is an asshole. In fact, the posters for Payback even went so far as to call him the bad guy. But if you ask me, calling Porter the bad guy is a bit misleading because it underestimates how big of pricks the guys that he's up against are. I've got friends. All I have to do is point. I pick up a phone, say his name, and he's a dead man. And this time he stays dead. That's Val, played by Greg Henry. He's the number one asshole in a movie filled with them. Val will annoy you nearly every time he's in a scene. But he also drops some of the best lines in Payback. I mean, he's got away with women. Oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. I knew I'd seen that ass before. Val's got a special way of describing Chinese people. Probably all kung fu motherfuckers. And Val spits my favorite line in the entire movie after making a scene at a crowded restaurant. You know what, Val? This one's on me, okay? You see me reaching for my fucking wallet? No. But for as tough and nasty and mean as the men in Payback are, I feel like it might be a character played by Lucy Liu that's actually the film's ultimate badass. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant Lucy Alexis Liu. Liu would drop the middle name from her screen moniker the year after Payback hit theaters. It was one of the films that launched her to stardom. She plays Val's dominatrix girlfriend, and nobody can tie this lady down. Can't you see I'm working here? Can't you see I'm working here? Oh, yeah. The cast of Payback reads on paper like a dream, and mostly a dream because you literally cannot believe that these guys are appearing in one film together. It just seems too unlikely. At the top, you've got Gibson and Maria Bello as his love interest, but the supporting cast is where it really gets interesting. 
Aside from Lucy Liu, there's Oscar winner James Coburn and Grammy-winning country music icon Chris Christopherson as heads of a crime syndicate that's unimaginatively called The Syndicate. Throw in dependable character actors like David Paymer and William Devane, and you've got a hell of a little ensemble. But honestly, none of their parts are very memorable, really, aside from Coburn, whose Colonel Sanders-esque character steals every single scene he's in. Hey, what the hell are you doing, man? Fairfax. That just... Fairfax. Yeah, yes, no, it's, it's all right. He's just killing my alligator bags and shooting holes in my suit. Man, that's just mean. That's mean, man. In terms of its length, payback is very short. It's just over 100 minutes long, and it's paced very well. That is, until a romantic storyline is introduced. The action is zipping along in this movie until we get to one-on-one -on -one interactions between Gibson and Bello, who plays a prostitute that Porter's gone soft for. We've had nothing but sly, witty machismo until this scene happens. I think that uh, all those stories about you being dead were true. You're just too thick-headed to admit it. I don't think I can overstate enough how much that one scene in Payback grinds the entire film to a halt. I mean, there are just no sparks of any kind between Bello and Gibson, and the dialogue is flat out lame. These guys aren't going to stop until they kill us, are they? No. And speaking of awkward dialogue, listen to this line that Chris Christopherson spits at Porter late in the film. Tell me where John is and I'll finish you quick. I promise you won't have to find out what your left ball tastes like. I think Mel Gibson's look at the end of the clip says it all. That wasn't acting. He just genuinely could not believe what he just heard. I don't care how you feel about country music, but Chris Christopherson is one of the best songwriters in music history. I mean, this is the guy that put pen to paper and wrote Sunday Morning Coming Down. He wrote Help Me Make It Through the Night. He wrote Me and Goddamn Bobby McGee, all right? And Brian Helgelin has him telling somebody that he won't make him find out what his testicle tastes like? It's a travesty. But overall, I really like Payback. I dig how straightforward its storyline is and how the lead character is unapologetic for being an asshole. Help me. Get out. It's got a cool soundtrack. It's got plenty of funny, repeatable dialogue. Hold on one second. Shut up! I'm on the fucking... And it's got a shootout scene that's a blast to watch. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Okay, so even though it's not particularly original and it really doesn't have any three-dimensional characters, Payback's got a ton of attitude and a bunch of style without beating you over the head trying to prove how slick it is. In short, I like it because it's a blue-collar gangster flick. I give it four out of five stars and an overdue review grade of damn fine. I've got a few minutes. So go boil an egg. For more long-form movie, television, and music reviews, go online to OverdueReview.com.